Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the mechanism of action of a drug uh, that's actually called sildenafil, but you may know it more commonly as Viagra. Now, this right here is the chemical structure of Viagra. We'll actually go back to this in a few minutes. Um, and actually what Viagra was originally marketed as is just a vasodilator for people who had uh, different kinds of heart disease and cardiovascular disease. Because if you have blood vessels that are, or just a general vasculature that's too constricted, then that's going to cause elevated blood pressure. And so what sildenafil or Viagra was originally marketed to do was to actually be, act as a vasodilator. And so if you increase the diameter of the blood vessels in the vasculature, then that overall decreases blood pressure and uh, decreases the overall cardiovascular load. And so that's how it promotes its uh, healthy effects. But as some of you may know, Viagra had another effect, and that is that uh, people who generally have cardiovascular disease at that point are usually going to be in their 50s or 60s where uh, the incidence of, or the prevalence, I should say, of erectile dysfunction is a lot more common. And so the people who are taking this drug could actually get an erection again. And so that's actually now what it's marketed as. And so we're going to look at the mechanism of how that actually occurs here. Really both uh, maintenance of erection and cardiovascular vasodilation. But before we get into that, we really need to understand uh, what the function of nitric oxide here is with respect to guanylate or guanylyl cyclase, and then this enzyme down here, cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase. And so this is actually what's going to be happening on this slide without administration of Viagra or sildenafil. So up here, this is actually going to be the cytoplasm of a cell called an endothelial cell. Um, these cells are actually adjacent to the smooth muscle cells. And remember, smooth muscle cells are going to be the muscular cells of the vascular which you're actually going to be able to constrict or dilate uh, based on uh, chemical cues such as nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, or NO, will actually cause the smooth muscle cells to relax, causing dilation or vasodilation. So in the endothelial cell right here, we have an enzyme called endothelial nitric oxide synthase, normally abbreviated as ENOS. And what this enzyme is going to do is just like any other nitric oxide synthase, it's going to convert arginine, the amino acid, into nitric oxide, Okay, usually just abbreviated NO. Now NO is a gaseous phase, very small molecule. It's just two atoms, N and O. And this molecule is going to diffuse from the endothelial cell ultimately across some membranes into the smooth muscle cell cytoplasm or its sarcoplasm. And once inside the smooth muscle cell, the nitric oxide is going to exert its effect there. So this is the enzyme right here inside the smooth muscle cell, guanylate or guanylyl cyclase, depending on uh, which textbook or, or information you're looking at. Now this guanylate cyclase or guanylyl cyclase has a heme moiety. Remember heme is a giant organic coenzyme with an iron chelated in the center. It turns out that this nitric oxide can actually stick to and bind to the iron of that heme. And when that occurs, the enzyme changes conformations and becomes activated. And once nitric oxide binds, and guanylyl cyclase becomes activated, it can then perform its catalytic activity, which is to convert GTP into cyclic GMP. And this reaction is pretty much uh, analogous to the reaction of adenylate cyclase or adenylyl cyclase that we've seen in other videos, which converts ATP to cyclic AMP, except the, the nucleotide here is guanine. And so once nitric oxide activates guanylate cyclase, we get cyclic GMP. Now, there are two things cyclic GMP can do, basically two fates. One is it can just exert its effect as shown over here. And what cyclic GMP does is it activates an enzyme called cyclic GMP mediated protein kinase. Okay, um, This enzyme basically is going to induce a phosphorylation cascade, but that ultimately is going to lead to decreased calcium influx into this cell, into the smooth muscle cell. Remember, just like any muscle cell, if you have increased calcium influx, that's going to tend to activate the muscle cell and cause it to be in a more contracted state, just like skeletal muscle. Okay, And so that would more or less cause vasoconstriction or at least a higher degree of vascular tone. 
But by decreasing calcium influx, what that serves to do is ultimately promote relaxation of the muscle cell, that smooth muscle cell, and that would cause vasodilation of the, of the blood vessels. Okay? And that's what cyclic GMP is going to do while its concentration remains elevated in the smooth muscle cell. But this response by cyclic GMP is only going to be short-lived and it's only going to be it's only going to be in existence as long as we have nitric oxide production. Because what's going to happen is there's an enzyme right here called cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase. What this enzyme does is it converts cyclic GMP into its acyclic form GMP. Okay? And in the GMP form, it doesn't have this effect on vasodilation. So in other words, what this enzyme does, the cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase, is it completely inactivates cyclic GMP. And so if you were to take this enzyme and inactivate all of this cyclic GMP to regular GMP, then you're going to go back to the baseline calcium ion influx, and that's going to remove the vasodilation effect and cause not necessarily vasoconstriction, but it's going to go back to its normal vasomotor tone. Now, in order to have an erection, you have to have blood flow into the penis. Okay, I think we all know that. And one of the ways that that blood flow is maintained is by this vasodilation. And so what happens is, if you have too much activity, relatively speaking, of this phosphodiesterase, then the cyclic GMP is going to be degraded to GMP, and you're going to lose that capacity for vasodilation. And that's actually, um, just with age, that's what happens with uh, the mechanism of erectile dysfunction, is you're not having enough of this nitric oxide, so not enough cyclic GMP, and therefore not enough vasodilation to maintain the erection. Well, let's now look at the mechanism, how this relates to sildenafil or Viagra. So the same stuff is going to be happening as before. The endothelial cell is going to be producing nitric oxide via the endothelial nitric oxide synthase. The nitric oxide diffuses into the smooth muscle cell. And we're going to activate guanylate cyclase and get conversion of GTP into cyclic GMP. And the G cyclic GMP is going to have the same effect. However, in the case of Viagra or sildenafil administration, this molecule is going to get into the active site of cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase and prevent cyclic GMP from binding and being degraded. So therefore, Viagra here, or sildenafil, is acting as an inhibitor of this enzyme. And so if you inhibit this enzyme, what's going to happen to the rate of degradation of CGMP? Well, it's not going to be degraded as quickly, and so the cyclic GMP levels are going to remain elevated for a much longer period of time at a given nitric oxide level. And so that's because this enzyme is being inhibited by sildenafil. So what's going to happen is the CGMP, cyclic GMP, is going to remain elevated. It's going to promote increased or prolonged action of the cyclic GMP-mediated protein kinase. So prolonged decreased calcium influx and then prolonged vasodilation. And so if you have prolonged vasodilation, at a given nitric oxide level, this is going to help maintain a person's erection. And that's why you typically see those commercials where it'll say, call your doctor if it lasts for more than four hours. Um, that's because you're having a lot of cyclic GMP build up because it's not being degraded by this phosphodiesterase. Um, if you were to stop taking the Viagra, or at least if the body was to metabolize the sildenafil or Viagra so that it, its um, concentration goes down, then you're going to release that inhibition on this enzyme, and then the cyclic GMP will start being degraded again to GMP, and this response will be terminated. Okay. So this is the mechanism of sildenafil or Viagra. So basically what's happening is it's keeping cyclic GMP levels elevated for a longer period of time uh, because it's inhibiting this phosphodiesterase. And so you get prolonged vasodilation by this mechanism. All right. So hopefully this video gave you some intuition on the mechanism of action of Viagra. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.